the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another blessed evening this Friday, for another Bible preach session, and um, we thank our Lord for His infinite love, mercy, and kindness, for allowing us to still be in His presence, sharing His Word, which is the truth, the living and the life-giving Word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with all of our beloveds who are watching us through live streaming. We pray that you are always in good health and in good spirit, uh, built on the rock that is unshakable and unbreakable. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, always. Our beloveds, I pray that you are uh, strong in your faith for the Lord Jesus, entrusting everything in His capable hands and saying, Lord, let it be your will. Uh, that is done as, as, as it is done in heaven, let it be done in us humans on earth. Our beloved, once again, welcome to our uh, mini-series of lectures uh, under the title of Journey with Christ. But before, before we go into the topic of this evening, I'd like just to remind ourselves uh, of what we actually mentioned last Friday. Uh, we said that we need to, while we are going through these difficult times um, of this pandemic, we need to start a prayer room or a corner in our homes. Let us make our homes a small church, our beloved. Also, daily prayer. You can download 
um, the basic prayer book and there is also a, a Bible reading plans on our church website. You visit, uh, if you visit it at www.cfichali, G for George, S for Sam, C for Charlie, dot org, dot AU. And if you look at the um, menu under the, um, uh, the title uh, Journey with Christ, click on that button, you'll find the prayer book and all the plans, uh, biblical plans uh, for you there available, our beloveds. Do that on a daily, uh, on a daily uh, basis. I encourage you to do so. Also, um, um, we encourage you to watch our Bible preachings uh, both uh, on every Monday at 7 p.m. in Assyrian and every Friday at 7.30 p.m. in English. We have also our um, a con a small short contemplation named uh, Our Daily Bread. These contemplation are, contemplations are absolutely beautiful for your spiritual nourishment and encouragement. Um, and they are um, uh, given to you every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. It is on our YouTube channel and Facebook under Christ the Good Shepherd Church. Um, another thing we would like to encourage you also to watch a saint movie with your family. Uh, instead of watching something else, how about we watch a saint movie? It is very enriching for our spiritual growth. And uh, another thing, maybe start a hobby if you haven't, uh, if you can draw some icons, uh, write some hymns. And actually regarding writing a hymn, I am asking you, whoever is watching us and listening to us, if you are talented in writing pow uh, you know, poems, please do so, whether it be in English, uh, in Arabic, in Assyrian. We would love to see you writing for us and sending it to our email address, which appears on the screen. We would love you to write uh, hymns for us, so that way they can be turned into a beautiful um, melody. We put a melody to it, and then we sing it in the church. We would love you to write some lyrics that can be used for a church hymn. Um, also, a reminder that we, we did mention last week that every Wednesday between 12 midday to 2 p.m. on every Wednesday, we are giving uh, this grocery hampers for free uh, here at the church location at 32 Box Road, Wakeley. Um, so again, this coming Wednesday, which is the 11th of August, between 12 midday and 2 p.m., we are giving a um, 100 um, and probably a little bit more than 100 hampers. Um, and that will, be, that will be continuing every Wednesday till the end of this month. So uh, this is to help all the families that are struggling uh, through, uh, during these difficult times of lockdowns that we are witnessing in some areas of our beloved city, Sydney. Very good. Our uh, topic for this evening, which is a continuation uh, from last week, and we started uh, with our journey with Christ, and we started from the very beginning, and we spoke about angels, and we saw that um, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, the very beginning of the Holy Bible, uh, the Old Testament part, Genesis 1, 1, we saw that in the beginning it said, Elohim, God created the heavens and the earth. And we said heavens means angels. And then we went into a small depth about the angels uh, and as far as the angels being as servants. Uh, and we mentioned several biblical references where we see angels are actual servants of the human race. We also spoke about the number of angels, how many angels is there in heaven, and we gave biblical references. Uh, angels in their strength, angels in their speed, angels in their duties, uh, angels in their names, um, angels in their ranks, how many ranks is there in the angelic orders. And today we will continue this journey 
and we are going to say as well God's messengers to mankind. When we read in the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 16, and I heard the voice of a man between uh, Ulai and Ulai, and he called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So Gabriel is the archangel sent by God himself to mankind. Also, angels as messengers to mankind, we see in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, also, we see um, in, uh, in, in verse 10 and verse 13 of Luke, chapter 2. And Luke, chapter 22, verse 43, we see that as well. And also, we see angels as personal guardians. Personal guardians. Throughout the Bible, we find it repeatedly implied that each individual soul has uh, its angel. Thus, Ab Abraham, when sending his steward to seek a wife for his son Isaac, he says, he will send his angel before you, Genesis chapter 24, verse 7. And also, when the Lord Jesus was tempted in the wilderness in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, when the tempter, the enemy came to tempt the Lord Jesus, he quoted the Lord Jesus from the book of Psalm, Psalm number 90, where he said, um, uh, if you are the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written that he has given his angels charge over you, and in their hands shall, you, shall they bear you up lest perhaps you dash your foot against a stone. We see them as guardian angels. We see that also in Genesis chapter 16, verses 6 to 32. In the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 4. In 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 5. In the book of Acts of the New Testament, chapter 12, verse 7. In the book of Psalm, Psalm 33, and verse 8. And we also see that in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 10. All these verses as angels being our guardians. We said last week as well that the enemy, Satan, was one of the highest rank in the angelic order. He was a cherubim, which is the highest rank in the angelic order. This angel in the book of Genesis, it says that it's full of eyes inside and out. And we said again, it's a reminder that wherever you see the word I being mentioned in the Holy Bible, it means knowledge. The I means knowledge. So this angel cherubim was full of knowledge. So when he was cast out of the heaven, his knowledge was maintained with him, but that knowledge that was good when he was in heaven, now it turned into evil. And we can see what is happening in the world, what has been happening throughout the history of mankind. And until this very moment, the 21st century, it is nothing but absolute evilness. We're gonna come, our beloved, this evening, and we will talk about this fallen angel, and we said this angel, when he was cast out, he pulled with him one-third of the number of angels in heaven, the total angels in heaven. He pulled one-third of them and became foul spirits. We're gonna come to this Lucifer, and there are people that worship Lucifer in our time and age. They made Lucifer their God, so ignorant, so blind to follow Satan. The deceiver, the liar, as the Lord Jesus called him, the father of all lies. So sad that people follow Satan and worship him. So sad. We're gonna read together from the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. 
Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 15, it talks about the fall of Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount, on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, or Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. My goodness. The Lord God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth, heaven's angels. We said last time that God is love, and wherever there is love, there is freedom, and wherever there is freedom, there is choices, and wherever there is choices, there is the will. Angels are creation of God, Elohim. And since they are created by the Almighty God, they were created on the basis of love, therefore freedom, therefore a choice, therefore the will. The Lord God gave the angels the choice first before he gave it to mankind or to Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. So the angels had the choice whether to be with God be submissive to God, serving God, or to choose otherwise. This one angel from the highest rank in the angelic order, cherubim, this one angel decided to choose otherwise. He said, look at this, I'll read it again. In Isaiah 14, 13, he says, for you have said in your heart, it is God, God revealing the heart of this angel, because God knows every heart and every mind. He reads it all. So God, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna climb up. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, saying that I, he is saying to God, that I will take my throne above every other angel. I will be supreme sovereign over all the angelic orders. But he forgot that God, the creator, is the only sovereign authority over every angelic order, over the human race, over everything and everyone. He wanted to be like God as well. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. And please keep an, uh, re, uh, uh, remember the word mount or mountain. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. North meaning at the top. When you look at any map of any country, north is always at the top. He's saying in verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He is challenging God. He is saying to God, just like you are sovereign, supreme, I'm going to be exactly like you in the same kingdom. You are government. I will establish my own government in heaven. My head I'll, pull, I'll put it equal to your head, God. I am God as well. But you see, the problem is, my beloveds, God is the only I am. God will always be the only I am. There is no other I am but God himself. So this angel, the creation, the creature, wanted to be the creator. That's why he had to fall. He chose freely to be boastful. The first we, we see in here, 
the first ever sin made by the angel in heaven was pride, self-exaltation, pride. Pride, my beloved, is extremely dangerous. We should always ask and beg and beseech the Lord Jesus to give us the strength, the courage through his infinite grace and mercy to protect us from this self-pride because what kills a human is self-pride. So this angel decided to create a kingdom, a government in heaven for himself to rule over the rest of the angels. God said, it doesn't work this way, my dear friend. Yes, true, I created you uh, on the basis of love where there is freedom, where there is choice, where there is will. You chose to do certain thing against God. Therefore, it is your choice which you done it freely based on love. I accept, but you cannot stay in my kingdom because in heaven there is only one king, one ruler, one sovereign authority, and that is God. You are not the creator, angel. I am the creator. You are a creation of mine. You cannot be God. Since you chose to be a God, therefore you cannot stay in my kingdom in heaven. You are cast out. He deceived one third of the angelic, of the angels in heaven. He deceived them and brought them down with him and became foul spirits like the evil one, Lucifer. Or he became Satan. When this angel was cast out of heaven, became Satan, the evil one, he failed to establish his kingdom in heaven. Now he said, okay, I'm going to come on earth and establish it there. Since I failed to do so in heaven, I'm going to manage to succeed on earth. I will establish my kingdom on earth. He started with what the world call empires. Empires are nothing but a government system based on evil intention. The first empire, the Egyptian empire, followed by the Assyrian empire, followed by the Babylonian empire, the fourth one, Persian and the Medes empire, the fifth one, uh, Macedonian empire, uh, led by the Alexander the Great, and the sixth one, the Roman Empire, and the seventh one, which I will be talking a little, little, little bit more in depth, was the British Empire slash American Empire. A British American uh, became together in the late 19th century. But the British Empire actually began back in the 16th century. Now, seven empires, and we see, we see this very clear in the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and chapter 17. In chapter 13, which by the way, we will be, once we finish our mini series of lectures uh, on the journey with Christ, we will go back and continue our commentary on the book of Revelation in its entirety, 22 chapters. In, in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, uh, it talks about this beast coming out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns, and on those ten horns there was ten crowns. And when you look in chapter 17, it actually, from verses 9 to 11, Revelation 17, 9 to 11, those heads is referred to as kings, as kings. So there were seven kings, and these seven kings are the seven empires which Satan established his kingdom on earth. Now when I said earlier, pay attention to the word mount, which is in Isaiah 14 verse 13. 
Satan is saying, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Mountain in the Holy Bible talks about government system. Let us go together and let us read from the book of Revelation, chapter 17, and verses 1 to 11. Revelation 17, verses 1 to 11. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the um, filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, listen to this, and on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of all and of the abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. This beast we saw in Revelation 13 coming out of the sea, seven heads and ten horns. Exactly it is the same beast mentioned in Revelation 17 where the woman is sitting on this beast that has seven heads and ten horns. And this woman, he calls her what? The Babylon the Great. So who is this woman? Babylon the Great. Remember this. And the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns, the beast that you saw was, and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition, to disappearance. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. There is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. What did Satan, this fallen angel, Lucifer, what did he say in, in Isaiah 14, 13? I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will sit on the mount. Look at this mountain. The seven heads are seven mountains. So Satan wanted to sit on the mountain, meaning he wanted to establish a kingdom, a governmental system, and he wanted to be the ruler, the head, the, the driving force behind this pyramid. Have you seen the pyramid? Upside down, my beloveds, with that eye in the middle. I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Who was this woman? The great Babylon, mystery, the great Babylon. She's sitting on these seven mountains. And these seven mountains are the seven heads. The seven heads is the beast that came out of the sea in Revelation 13. And those seven heads, which are the mountains, are the seven empires that we just mentioned earlier. So now, 
John the Beloved is writing the book of Revelation when he was in the island of Pedmos in Greece, in the heart of the Mediterranean Sea. He is saying in Revelation 17, where we were reading this for you guys, uh, our beloved, uh, guys, that's a, a nice way of uh, saying it in a slang way. I love you guys. So in, in Revelation 17, he is saying five have fallen. Five have fallen. He's talking about the seven heads, which are the seven mountains. We said the seven heads is the beast that came out of the sea in Revelation 13. And this woman in Revelation 17 is sitting on these seven heads. And this woman is referred to as the mystery, the uh, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great. Now, he's saying five have fallen. And we said these seven heads are the seven empires that we mentioned earlier. Five have fallen at his time. Which are the five empires that were fallen at his time? The Egyptian, the Assyrian, the Babylonian, the, Persian, the Persians and the Medes, and the Macedonian Empire. These five were already gone at the time of John the Beloved writing the book of Revelation. And then he says, one is, one is meaning at his time is still current. Which empire was ruling at the time of John the Beloved? The sixth empire, which was the Roman Empire. And then he says, and the other has not come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. I know it's somewhat difficult to understand because book of Revelation is a prophetic symbolic book at the same time. Prophecy, it is always hard to actually pinpoint or detect uh, you know, accurately. And, and to be not only prophetic but also symbolic at the same time, it makes it even harder when it is written in that kind of a terminology or language. Now he's saying there is the other one that hasn't come yet. But when this one comes, meaning it will come definitely, it will continue for a short time. The seventh one. It will continue for a short time. Then he says, verse 11, Revelation 17, 11, the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth, meaning the seventh one, when he's gonna come later on, out of the seventh will come the eighth, but this eighth is the seventh at the same time. Wow. This seventh one, John the Beloved, over 2000, about 2,000 years ago, he said it hasn't come. Which was the seventh empire? The British Empire that came in the 16th century and lasted, lasted until the end of World War II. World War II ended on the 2nd of September 1945. World War II ended on the 2nd of September 1945. At the end of World War II, that was the end of the British Empire. But one thing happened. In the late 19th century, the American Empire came and joined force with the British Empire. They became the seventh empire in the 20th century. They were together as allies and united in World War I. And they were together in World War II. But what happened? The end of World War II, it was the end of the British Empire. It says that the seventh one will be wounded, but this wound will be healed. And out of this wound, the eighth will surface up. And this eighth is the seventh. So this empire that united in the 20th century was the American and the British empire. I don't wanna go into too much details because we will elaborate on that in depth when we go back to the commentary of the book of Revelation. 
And why I say the British and the American are one in the 20th century? Because in Revelation 13, it talks about another beast coming out of the land, not the sea. And the one that came out of the land is, was like a ram with two horns. And when you read in the book of Daniel, the horn is an actual kingdom. It is an empire. So there are two horns, meaning they, this ram is of two kingdoms, two empires. And what did we say? The Holy Bible called these empires beasts. And a beast, my beloved, does one thing, destroys, kills, and sheds blood. Because this beast, the power driven, driving it is the old serpent, Satan, the fallen angel, Lucifer, who became Satan. He came to establish his kingdom on earth, and through this kingdom, he rules over the entire human race. Because he said, since I am not going to make it to God's kingdom, I will not let any human being to enter God's kingdom. They will not take my place. Satan is nothing but a jealous thing. He's a very jealous thing. Very jealous. He hates us. And he hates the Lord Jesus. He, to the core, he hates the Lord Jesus. What is happening in the world is to, do, is to do with Jesus Christ only, no one else. If it wasn't the Lord, believe you me, you wouldn't have seen all this turmoil happening. Because only one crushed the head of the serpent. Only one overcame Satan, Jesus of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. So now Satan is on a is on a rampage. He wants to destroy the human race. He doesn't want no one to make it to God's kingdom. He established his kingdom on earth and he, through these empires, which are referred to as the beasts, and he came to destroy and kill everyone. Now, why we say Brit British and American are together? Because the second beast in the book of Revelation chapter 13 comes out of the land. He is like a ram. A ram is a sheep, a ram with two horns. Horns represent kingdom. So they are two kingdoms, but they're one. And they are a ram, meaning a sheep. When you read in the Holy Bible, who is this Lamb of God? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God slain for the redemption of the entire world. So from outside, they are dressed up in the outfit of Christ. America and Great Britain, before the world, they are seen as Christian countries. So from outside they are Christians, but from inside they speak blasphemy against the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. So this is the, the ram that came out of the land. And the two empires, Amer Great Britain and America, who are seen as Christian countries before the world, from outside they dressed up in a ram, which is a Christian outfit, representing uh, symbolically the Lord Jesus, and but from inside they have a different agenda, an evil one. What happened to this seventh empire? The seventh got wounded. Wounded how? When Great Britain fell after World War II and is no longer an empire. So this ram got wounded. Great Britain is gone. Who is remaining in the entire field? America. America is the continuation of the seventh empire. But this wound got healed. And out of this wound, out of the seventh came the eighth. And the eighth is the seventh. What came out of the seventh? And the seventh is Great Britain and America. Great Britain and America did one thing together. 
they established the United Nations. It was called the Leagues of Nations. It was established exactly to be precise, my beloveds, on the 24th of October, 1945. On the 24th of October, 1945, the nations of leagues were, were, was established by these two who were one empire, Great Britain and the U United States of America. The UN is the eighth one that came out of the seventh and is the seventh. And then the, it was wounded, Great Britain is gone, now America is. The United, Sta the United Nations is the eighth one who is the seventh empire of the 21st century. Now, I'm going to take you on a nice journey to the book of Genesis. And I'm trying to use the, this mobile. Sometimes technology is good. Sometimes, not always. Genesis, let's go together, and please, I encourage you, and I, I need to mention this. When we come to these Bible sessions, have your Bible ready with you. Have your Holy Bible open before you, and have your pen and paper. Write down references. Write down you know, information for yourself, because when you write things down, you, do, you tend to remember them uh, much, much better. And even if you forget, you can go back to your notes and refresh your memory. So please, I encourage you, have your Bible with you, Holy Bible, and a pen and a paper and write down things. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11 and verses 1 to 9. Let's go to Genesis 11 verses 1 to 9 and let's see who was this woman, the harlot woman, that she was drinking the blood of the saints of Jesus. She was drunk in her own fornication. She killed the saints of the Lord Jesus. This woman, this harlot woman, is called Babylon the Great. Well, let's see. Where is, who is this Babylon the Great? John the Beloved is writing the book of Revelation for the future, not for the past. If we are talking about Babylon, which is in Iraq, Mesopotamia in the Middle East, well, definitely John the Beloved is not talking about that Babylon because that Babylon was history as far as John the Beloved was concerned. The book of Revelation is futuristic, not past tense, is future tense. So who is and what is the great Babylon which is the harlot woman of the future? Which one is it? It is it is the eighth who came out of the seventh empire and is the seventh empire. And we said the seventh empire is Great Britain and the United States of America together as the ram who came out of the land, two horns, Great Britain one horn, America another horn, dressed up as ram, Christians before the world, but inside speak blasphemy against Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the people of these countries. I'm talking about governments. Please pay attention. Satan came to establish a mountain, his mountain on earth. This mountain is kingdom. Kingdom is a government, is a beast, is an empire, evil intentions, evil. There are some wonderful British people and American people, faithful to the Lord, loving the Lord, have good conscience, good morals and values and principles, and I pray for them and I love them from the bottom of my heart. I'm talking about governmental systems that are evil in these countries. So now, let's go to Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, and we'll see what is this Babylon the great of the future? And it is the United Nations. Because United Nations was established by both Great Britain and America, the empire of the 20th century, on the 24th of October, 1945. It was called the Leagues of Nations and then changed to the United Nations. And now it is in New York City. 
Amazing. We read Genesis 11, 1 to 9. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelled there. Then they, they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a, ci a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, my goodness. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But, it's amazing, it's beautiful, this little tiny word, but, it makes a whole change and difference. But, totally different direction, but the Lord, wow. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they pros uh, propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, the name, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. John the Beloved in Revelation 17, he called this woman, the harlot woman, sitting on these seven heads, which are the seven empires. He calls her mystery, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is in the future. The Babel, uh, the Babel of the future is the United Nations, which is the eighth that came out of the seven that was wounded and is the seventh. What happened in Babylon of Iraq, Mesopotamia? And by the way, that's where I come from. I was born in Iraq, and I'm proud to be an Assyrian. The greatest, uh, uh, the greatest civilizations to be seen, the, the cradle of all civilization. In Babel, when the people came out of the great flood, the Ark of Noah, after they came out of that Ark, they headed to the east. They followed the sun. They went to the east and they came to this place called Shinar, Mesopotamia, meaning between the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. So they came and dwelt in a place that was between the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, Mesopotamia. Wherever you see water, there is future, there is life, there is prosperity. So they came there and they said, you know what? We are one, we speak one language, one tongue, one mind. Let us come and build for ourselves a name. Let us build a tower. The head of this tower, let it be to the heavens, reaching the heavens. Let us build for ourselves a name. So what do we do to build for ourselves a name? What do we do? We build a tower that the head of this tower reaches the heavens. Who is in the heaven? The Lord Jesus was asked by his 12 apostles, Lord, teach us on how to pray. He said, every time you pray, you say, our Father who art in heaven. Again, the idea of Satan, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Almighty. I will put my head with the head of God. I'll be equal to him. Let us build this tower and make its head reach the heaven where God is. We are to challenge God again. This idea is satanic. Build a name for ourselves because they swapped the name of God and made a name for themselves. 
they took the true divine God out of their life and created a false God for themselves called Satan. And this is exactly what is happening in our time and age. Satan is behind all this mess. But it's the humans who allowed Satan to be powerful because they denied true divine God, Jesus Christ, and followed and worshiped Satan, the fallen angel, the one who is lost, and he's gonna go into the river of fire in the end. So let's put the head of this tower into the heavens and say to God, look God, back in the old days, we were doing it our way, not your way. What was happening in the time of Noah? Why was God so angry with the human race that he brought that great flood and flooded the whole earth and drowned those people except eight people, Noah, his wife, three sons and three daughter-in-laws. Eight people entered the ark with some animals. Why? Because people of that time, the time of Noah, they were, the Lord Jesus said it, at the time of Noah, they were marrying and divorcing and marrying, marrying and remarrying, marrying and remarrying. There was apparently a lot of divorces happening and a lot of marriages happening two and three and four and five times getting married. And the Lord God said it, marriage is only once. You only have one. There is only Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Please, get a life. It is Adam and Eve. This is God's creation. And God is the creator. Whether, you, whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not. So God said marriage is intended to be once and you shall have only one wife. So when they started marrying, divorcing and marrying again and divorcing and marrying again and doing everything evil under the sun before the eyes of God, God got angry. He wiped them with the great flood. When this people that came out and went into, the, um, into Mesopotamia between the rivers of Tigris and Euphrates, they said, you know what? We do not want to give up on our old habits. We had fun back then, but God ruined it for us. I wanna have 100 girls. I wanna enjoy life. I can't stick myself with only one. This is life sentence imprisonment. <laughs> So they wanted to have fun. They didn't want to give up on their old habits. So they thought for themselves, let us make a name for ourselves. Build a tower. To say to God, God, we're going to build a tower and we'll make the head of this tower reach the heavens. So that way we stick to our old habits and we still have fun and do everything evil before your eyes. And when you get angry again, you're going to bring the great flood. And when you bring the great flood, we're going to climb in this tower and we're going to escape your wrath. And then we'll say to you, we win. Not you, God, we win. So what did God do? He said, let us go down and confuse them. The word Babel in Aramaic, Syriac or Hebrew, or it's in Aramaic actually, Babel means confusion. And it also can mean the gate of God, Bab El. El in Aramaic, Syriac, or Hebrew is God. El is God, and Bab is gate. And, it, and this word is also used in the Arabic language, Bab, which is a gate or a door. So Bab El means the gate of God because it was from Babylon where humanity came out of the gate of God and scattered all over the world. That's where it all began. And also Babel means confusion. So the Lord God brought so many different languages before they were speaking one. Now they are speaking so many languages. This guy began not to understand his friend, his fellow citizen. They did not understand. One speaks Arabic, the other Assyrian, the other probably Chinese. And since they did not understand, 
each one went their own way. They got confused. They got scattered out of Babylon. How did they build this tower? From what? They said, we are going to come and build this tower. Look at this. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. Wow. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. So they came and they said, if we build this tower from stone, we need to actually go and dig the mountains, and then when we bring out these rocks and these boulders, we need to hand carve them all by hand to bring out a perfect brick made out of stone to start building the tower. This process is gonna take forever. We will die and we will never get to actually build the tower because to carve a perfect brick out of a stone that is dug from a mountain, it requires a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of energy. What is the quickest way to make a brick that is similar to the stone, strong, but extremely easy and, and very efficient, will do it in no time. Will make this brick out of mud, clay. So what did they do? They took a shortcut. Isn't the human race today taking shortcuts to do it their way, not God's? And that's why every time any one of us takes a shortcut in their life, they will end up destroying themselves. Never ever take shortcuts. A thief, for him to, buy, to have a Ferrari, getting money from Centrelink, that will be impossible. But he wants a Ferrari. So what do I do? I need to get a Ferrari, but on my Centrelink payment, I'll never get it. So what do I do? I'll take a shortcut. I'm gonna go and steal, or I'm gonna go and sell some drugs and make money quickly and go and buy the Ferrari. He gets the Ferrari and him and the Ferrari goes into absolute destruction. They destroy themselves. So they said, we wanna take a shortcut of making a brick. Out of a mud, we're gonna make up a frame. We'll bring this clay and put it in this frame and then put it in the inferno. Cook this clay. When you cook this clay, it comes out solid, stronger than the stone. And instead of making one brick out of stone, we will make a thousand out of clay, shortcut. So they build the tower with bricks of clay, not stone. The Lord God, when you read in the book of Genesis, he always said to Adam and his descendants, when you build a house, you make sure you build it out of stone, rock, not clay. So they disobeyed God. They disobeyed God's order and commandment, and they took their way instead of God's way because they wanted to make a name for themselves. So they made the bricks out of clay, and instead of using mortar, they used asphalt. All of us, my beloved, we know asphalt doesn't stick on clay. This brick, it's made out of clay. And then they brought another brick. And between this brick and the other, they put asphalt and they put the other brick on top of it. And they put asphalt and they put the other brick on top of it. So what was holding the bricks together was the asphalt, but the asphalt never, never stick, never sticks to clay. When, when the sun hits that asphalt on a hot sunny day, the asphalt begins to melt. And when the asphalt melts, it will all disappear. The bricks will collapse. Now, what is the Tower of Babylon? I wish I had more time, my goodness. The Tower of Babylon, my beloved, symbolically reflects the word I am, me my way, me, my way. Because the people of the time said, 
We will make a name for ourselves. We don't want God's name to be on us. We're going to create our own name for ourselves. So the Tower of Babylon represents me being the I am. You see, this angel wanted to establish a kingdom in heaven and make himself the I am like God. He had to fall. And every human being that says to themselves, I will do things my way, not God's way, you become the I am. But your I am is the false God. You have been deceived by Satan, the enemy. Therefore, if you don't repent and come back to the true divine God, your end will be ab absolute disappearance, destruction, and eternal death. So they said, we'll make a name for ourselves. So that tower is me, my way. The brick was made out of what? Clay. What is human body made out of? Clay, my beloved. The word Adam in the Aramaic Syriac language, it means red mud, edemta. That is the true pronunciation of the, or the correct pronunciation of the word Adam, edemta. In Aramaic Syriac, dem means blood, edemta means red mud. So Adam was made out of clay. And guess what? That brick of the Tower of Babel was made out of clay. So that brick represents the human being. So one brick is me. The other brick is my neighbor. The other brick is the other person and so on and so on. So we came and said to ourselves, we will build a relationship between one another where God does not exist in it. So when we come and build a relationship between ourselves without God being in the equation, what is between the relationship is felt bitumen. It is absolute disaster. Any relationship, any relationship that is built without God being in, in that equation, that relationship will not last. Because it is only through God that we are able to have a relationship. Without God, there is nothing, there is no relationship. Because a relationship is only made possible where love, true, divine love, is the foundation of that relationship. So where the relationship is built outside of divine love, it is an absolute false relationship and it comes from the enemy and the end result will be disastrous. You cannot stick the asphalt on the brick that is made out of clay. We cannot have relationship between us as humans without our Creator, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the divine God. Only one. There is no one else. So these people wanted to do it their way. No God. Look around us, my beloved, the 21st century. I call the 21st century generation a godless generation. It is a generation where God is absent in it. We are trying to build relationship with one another with no God in it. We are saying there is no God. And even if there is one, we don't care about him. We will do it our way. What did Karl Marx say when the founder of communism and I can see governments that are supposed to be democratic governments. Today they are implementing nothing but communist ideologies. Karl Marx, you know what he said? He said, our father who art in heaven, stay there. He challenged God. This lost soul atheist, evil Satan worshiper. 
He said, our Father who art in heaven, stay there. You are God in heaven and I am God on earth. This is the Tower of Babylon. I am God on earth. I'll do whatever I want, however I want, whenever I want, with whom I want. Isn't it the case of the 21st century, my beloveds? Isn't it? So what happened? But the Lord, <laughs> these people have been deceived by Satan. They think they can do whatever they want. Those so-called elites, the secret societies that are trying to control the world. You have been deceived. You have been blinded by Lucifer, your God, your false God, Satan, whom you worship. But your God, remember, is under the foot of my God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. So, but the Lord, he said, I'm not going to let these people do whatever they want. I have given them freedom, but their freedom is not unlimited. It is finite. It is limited. So are we going to go down and we're going to confuse their language? Listen, please, people, don't ever think that the day will come where you're going to say you can do whatever you want. That day will never happen. Governments, you need to listen. The day that you think you can do whatever you want and get away with it, that will never happen. Will never happen. Because there is only one I am, the I am, the only true divine God in heaven that is in control of everyone and everything. And Satan, who established his empires on earth, that Satan is under the foot of Jesus Christ. So think about it, my beloved people. Think about it before it's too late. So they got scattered and the tower was never built. Went up a little bit and stayed there and gone, never to come back. That tower surfaced up as the writer of the book of Revelation, John the Beloved says, in the future, this har woman, this harlot woman will appear in the future as the mystery Babylon the Great. So the Tower of Babylon is going to surface up in the end of times. And the Tower of Babylon of the end of times, which is the 21st century, our time and age, is nothing but the United Nations, so-called. Isn't it a tower? It's a building. <laughs> oh, it's pretty identical to the Tower of Babylon. It's another tower. And it's called the UN. I'll leave you with this. In the United Nations, the only thing you are allowed to talk about is human rights. There is no one that has ever come to say God's rights. Everyone in the United Nations speaks about human rights, human rights, human rights. No one talks about God's rights because they, they have made a name for themselves. They build the tower against God. And they made a name and this tower, they said, is gonna, the head of it is going to reach the heavens. We're going to be God on earth. You are God in heaven. You stay there. None of your business. We will run our affairs on earth as we please, not as you please, God. So all you hear in the UN, human rights. Somebody wants to go out in the street naked, they have the right. Somebody wants to change his sex, they are right. It is human rights. They can do whatever they want. Because since there is no sovereign God, since there is no heavenly uh, intervention, there is no divine law, well, you become your own law. You do whatever you want. And what is more beautiful than this? What is more pleasant than this? What is more eloquent than this? I am so free. Freedom, democracy. Wow. 
They talk about human rights. Nobody speaks about God's rights. If you speak about God's rights, they will stone you to death and they will kick you out. The Tower of Babel back then in history, it was all about human rights. So what is the Tower of Babel? Me. And what is me? My rights, not God's. And today, everybody's speaking about human rights. Nobody talks about God's rights. No wonder we are living in hell. When any human being, this has got nothing to do what kind of a religion you have. <laughs> this has got to do with the true divine God. This true divine God, I profess and confess is Jesus Christ. And I will die for this. I'm willing to die for my Lord. Anytime. I will never blink my eyes. Jesus is the only God. There is no one else. This has got nothing to do with your religion. It's got to do with the true divine God, the creator of all. The creator of all. Today, they're talking about human rights. When you do things your way as a human being, do you know who is ruling over you and controlling you? 100% Satan. Don't ever think that you can be free on your own and do whatever. This is a delusion. Satan has deceived so many people. There is no one free. You were never created to be free on your own. You need to be under the guidance of someone, either God in heaven or Satan in hell. You choose. But for you to be on your own free, please get it out of your head. It doesn't exist. That is a biggest lie ever to exist. You are not free. Either Jesus rules over your life or Satan trample you under his foot and enslave you. I'll say this. When we talk about cultures, there are three kinds of cultures, no more, no less. There is what we call the theonomous culture, the hadronomous culture, and the autonomous culture. These are the only three cultures. There is no more, no less. These names derive from the Greek language, and I hope I'm pronouncing them correctly, and if I'm not, I apologize for our beloved Greeks, Greek-speaking people, and I love you, and I'm praying for you, and please pray for me. Theonomous, theos, God, nomos, law. There is a culture that is theonomous culture, God's law culture. There is the hedronomous culture. Hedros means another, nomos, law, another one's law culture. Well, if you take God out of the equation, it, you're ending up with another one being your God. Somebody has to rule over you. So when you take Theos, the true God, out of your culture, Satan, it is another one ruling over you. And there is the autonomous culture. Autos, self, nomos, law. Self, law, culture. The 21st century is an autonomous culture, 100%. Everyone is saying, it is my way or the highway. From a little kid, to an old man, everyone is saying, none of your business. I'll do whatever I want. I'll go wherever I want. I'll choose whatever I want. I'll say, I'll dress, and I'll change myself the way I want because we are living in an autonomous culture. The problem, the problem of our autonomous culture is one gravity. One problem, big problem. We will come and reach a dead end, what we call tolerance. Tolerance is intolerable in our time and age. Since it is my law culture, guess what? 
there is no one human being that is identical to another human being. The Almighty God created us unique with our unique identity. Your DNA and my DNA is made out of 3.1 billion bits of information. In everyone's DNA, there is 3.1 billion bits of information. If I were to actually change, uh, uh, write my DNA into words, with 500 words per A4 uh, paper, 500 words per page, it will take 600,000 pages to write your DNA and my DNA. 600,000 pages, 500 words per page. You put all the encyclopedias of the world together, they will get nowhere near your DNA. You have the greatest encyclopedia ever to exist inside of you. And out of the seven point something billion people that live on the face of this planet as we speak, there is no one's fingerprint that is identical to the other one. And somebody comes along and says that this all happened because it was all a fluke. Something exploded over 13 billion years ago and out of this big bang, everything came into this complexity and perfection. Get a life. Get alive. Just your DNA is, blows anyone's mind away. And some people are trying to manipulate your DNA. <laughs> Shame on you. Little kids blinded by Satan. I feel sorry for them and for their Satan. Just your DNA is amazing. God is amazing. The Creator is amazing. Elohim is incredible. So perfect universe. So complex universe. And you're telling me there is no God. If I were to say to anyone that is listening to us, the Oxford Dictionary came in this perfection and complexity because there was an explosion in the printing press. That would be insane to claim such a claim. The Oxford Dictionary came together in this perfection and complexity because an explosion happened in the printing press. This is absurd. The moment you look at the Oxford Dictionary, you know for sure there was a brain behind this Oxford Dictionary. A brain put it together. It was intentional, made by a sophisticated brain. How much more this complex universe that has come in this perfection and complexity, how much more does this brain, this universe has a brain behind it that put it together? This brain we call, or the Holy Bible calls that brain God. And this God is Jesus Christ, the love of my life. So, it is an autonomous culture. I do whatever I want. That's why the generation is lost. That's why we are living in darkness. That's why we are blind. That's why we are confused. That's why we have lost the plot. We are doing nothing but evil against God. The 21st century is a combination between the time of our father Noah the Great Flood and Sodom and Gomorrah, the two put together in the 21st century. In the time of Noah, it was a lot of divorcing happening and remarrying happening against God. And in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was the same sex happening. And in the 21st century, both are happening together. It is concentrated because it is the end of times. It is evil. And why all this? Because we chose to make a name for ourselves and build a tower called United Nations and speak about human rights, human rights, human rights. Forget about God. He doesn't exist. We are God on earth. Isn't that what the governments are saying? Or the UN is claiming? That is the Tower of Babylon. The, the, the harlot women of the 21st century.
I spoke a lot. I spoke a lot. Definitely I'll leave you with this. The Western world, the Western world, Australia is one of them, Canada, America, Europe, the Western world has succeeded, has succeeded in giving value to everything. They have succeeded tremendously in giving value to everything, but they have failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. I'll say it again, the Western world have succeeded tremendously in giving value to everything, but they have failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. And as long as you don't know what the purpose of a thing, you can never give it value. You can only give value to the thing when you know why it was made, what was the purpose of making this thing. Until you discover the purpose, stop talking about value. Human rights is value. Everyone speaks about human rights. Can we, for God's sake, once in our life for a change, can we stop saying human rights and start saying what is the right to be a human instead of saying human rights? Say what is the right to be a human, not human rights. Nobody talks about the right to be a human because the right to be a human is the purpose. Human rights is the value. We forgot the purpose, we denied the purpose, and we, and we held on to the value human rights. And that's why we abused our humanity. We abused it, we killed it, we destroyed it. Now, they want to teach that parents, you cannot refer to your child as a male or a female. You need to refer to it as it. You have no right to call your child my, my daughter. This is a female, this is a male, because you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna offend people. Human rights. My goodness. My goodness. We need governments. You need to listen to this before it's too late. Jesus Christ is coming with his wrath coming down on all of you. You need to go back and start talking about the purpose of the human, not the value of the human. Stop talking about human rights, please, for God's sake, stop it. Speak about the right to be a human. What is the right to be a human? We have forgotten what makes us a human. We've forgotten about that. See, the problem is, you know why they don't speak about the right to be a human? Since it's the purpose, that means to find out what is the purpose of our existence here, they need to go back to the origin of the human race. The origin of the human race is the very God whom they are denying. Since they have denied God, they're going to deny the purpose, the right to be a human. They're going to stick to the value, human rights. And since you don't want to know the purpose, you are abusing your rights. Abusing it. 100% abusing it. You have called darkness light and death life. <laughs> That's what's happening. When someone, when someone comes and asks a Christian this question, you Christians claim that your God is all love and all powerful. Then if he is who he is, all love and all powerful, how come he is allowing all this evil to infiltrate and to spread throughout the globe? If he is all love and all powerful, why isn't he stopping this evil? Every question is based on assumption. Every question is based on assumption, meaning 
since we ask a question, we don't know everything. And since we don't know everything, then even the question we're asking, we don't fully comprehend what we're asking in the first place. So the best answer to the question is another question. You ask the questioner the question. That is the answer to that questioner. And the Lord Jesus did it quite often. When people came and asked him something, he replied to them with a question, not an answer. Because when you question the questioner, you are allowing them to open up within their own assumptions. You are giving them a chance to think about what they asked initially. So, my question to whoever questions my God, who is all love and who is all powerful, and so truly is said, my question to you, my dear friend, since you assume there is evil, aren't you also assuming there is good? They cannot run away from this because if they're gonna say there is no good, then how did you know that this was evil if you had not seen good? How do you know it is dark if you did not see the light? If you didn't see the light, how would you know what darkness is? But since you saw the light, you understood this is light and this is darkness. So since you're claiming there is evil, aren't you assuming that there is also good? They'll say yes. Since you are assuming there is good, aren't you also assuming that there is a moral law that allows you to differentiate between what is good and what is evil? If there is no moral law, how do you know what is good and what is evil? It is through the moral law that gives you that insight to comprehend what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is evil. Since you're assuming there is good, aren't you assuming also there is a moral law to give you the opportunity to differentiate between what is good and what is evil? They'll say yes. Since you're assuming there is a moral law, aren't you also assuming there is a moral law giver whom you are denying, which is God, the true God? Since you're denying God, the true divine God, since you're denying this God, then there is no moral law. Since that moral law came from him, and see, since he doesn't exist, then there is more, no moral law. Since there is no moral law, there is no good. Since there is no good, there is no evil, then what is your question? The moment we take God out of our equations, then who are we? Next time somebody talks that denies God, I'll say, who is speaking because I don't know who you are. What is your identity? You're nothing without God, my dear friend. You're nothing. Journey with Christ. When you come to this realization and when you come into this encounter with Jesus, by the way, Jesus got nothing to do with Christians. There are so many Christians that are only Christians by name, not by deed. Christ doesn't know these people. Christ wants your hearts. He is God revealed in the flesh in the end of times. God, Jesus wants your heart. Be genuine. Seek the only true God. Call out to him. Say, Lord, God, if you're out there, I want to know who you are. I can assure you no one will come except Jesus. No one. No one. When you want to know God, Jesus will come. The, I, I will put my life on the line. I'm absolutely confident the only one that is going to show up is Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he is the only God revealed in the flesh. Come, have an encounter. Start your relationship with him. Make it an intimate one because Jesus is the groom to the bride. It is intimacy where the two become one, united. He wants you. He is all love. He is all mercy. He is all sacrifice. He is all humility. Come to him. Say, Lord, teach me. Show me. Tell me. Enlighten me. I want to know you. I have been doing it my way for so many years, and I was nothing but a miserable being. I was empty from inside. I was lost. 
I was nothing. So many billionaires, so many rich people did everything under the sun, but at the end of the day, they wrote their will before killing themselves, and they said, we tried everything, but nothing was fulfilling. I was always empty from inside, because my beloved friend, the only one that can fill that void that is in you is God, no one else. Stop doing it your way. Come back and acknowledge His presence, acknowledge His existence, acknowledge His divine love that wants and awaits to engulf you with it and put you in the core of His heart. Call out to Jesus and see if He's not gonna come. He will, because He is who He is, the true God in the flesh. The 21st century is the Tower of Babylon, the harlot woman, Babylon the Great. Human rights, look what we have done with this world and with ourselves. We have destroyed what makes up a human being, being a human being. We have destroyed it, and we've destroyed the world which God has given us so beautifully, so eloquent, so serene, so complicated in its perfection. Yet we destroyed it. We abused this world, and we abused our identity. Why? Because we, we, we held on to the value of the human, which is human rights, and we denied the purpose of the human, which is the right to be a human. Until we stop human rights focus, we will never find peace. We will destroy ourselves by ourselves, because the one who is controlling us is Satan. And Satan is the killer of mankind from the very beginning. My goodness, have we lost our mind? Have we lost the plot? Does it take a genius to figure out what is happening on a global level? It is absolutely satanic. 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 When any one of us comes back to the Lord, there and then only, you will find your peace. You will find yourself. You will find your identity. You will find the very purpose that God created you for, the right to be a human. You will find what makes you, you. And then only, everything will come into clarity. Everything will fall in its place so perfectly. You don't need to run and work hard. God has done it for you already. All you gotta do, embrace God and let Him navigate you through your journey with Christ on earth. Let Him navigate you, my beloved. Don't do it on your own. The nuclear weapons, which America began manufacturing, the very nuclear weapon will destroy America and the world. The, the Holy Bible says, what you plant, you shall harvest. Since I'm speaking about America, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Man, I've spoken too long. America, this is a warning based on love and humility. Once upon a time, you were very close to Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of all Kings. Today, you are denying your Jesus. You have walked away from your Lord. You have brought in laws that are against the Almighty God. The very foundation of America today is being shaken. You have denied Jesus, that's why you are in turmoil. That's why you are living in darkness and in total blindness. 
The moment you took the Holy Bible out of schools, the moment you introduced laws that are offensive to your Jesus Christ, rest assured the wrath of God will come upon you and no one will save you. Come back to the Lord. Otherwise, there will be another empire that is a dragon will come up and will devour you and the entire globe. Repent, America, before it's too late. Come back to your Lord and to our Lord and to the Lord of all and to the God of all and to the King of all, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come back. What happened to Canada? A secular government, once upon a time they were Christians, today they are denying him. What happened to Australia? They are denying him. What happened to Europe? Atheism infiltrated and devoured Europe. Where is Christ? Once upon a time, churches were packed with faithfuls. Today, churches are turned into museums and restaurants. Empty. Because they have walked away from the Lord. This is what we can expect from Satan. Lockdowns, fear, enslavement, and disappearance. That's what Satan does. We need the Lord. Journey with Christ. Pray, fast, beg the Lord to have mercy on all of us. Beg the Lord. Amen. Let's stand for the finale prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen.